Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a comedy, drama film from 2017, titled I Can Speak. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. During a rainy evening in the neighborhood, a mysterious man comes with a mallet to create craters on the market building walls. Another mysterious figure watches him from afar and makes sure to take pictures of what he's doing. The next morning, Park Min Jae, a junior civil service officer, starts his new job at the local district office. He introduces himself to everyone and meets his new co-workers, A Young and Jong Yun. Suddenly, the mood of the workplace becomes very tense when one of the mysterious figures from the night before shows up, she takes off the hood and the mask to reveal an elderly woman called Nao Kae Boon, who approaches manager Yang to tell him the man went to her neighborhood to destroy the walls like he does every time it rains. She has proof of it too, she's taken pictures and brought a sample of the sulfuric acid the man put on the cracks to break them down more and cause corrosion. The building owner cuts in, telling her the building is like that because of hooligans, and OK Boon accuses him of sending thugs on purpose to make people abandon their shops so they can redevelop. She also starts making a scene as she begins yelling at them, so Min Jae takes a picture of her claiming it's part of the complaint-related evidence recollection. He also points out she hasn't taken a number or filled in the corresponding forms and asks her to do so before calling for the next number. OK Boon accepts her defeat for now but promises she'll be back. After she's gone, his co-workers tell Min Jae about her, they call her Goblin Granny because she's the biggest problem in town. Whenever she sees even a little issue on the streets, she comes to the office to report it, she's filled over 8,000 by now because she's come every day for the last 20 years. She complained through five different directors here and is their biggest headache, people in town don't like her much either. But Min Jae thinks he can handle her if he goes by the book. The following day, OK Boon shows up with a pile of filled paperwork and a bunch of numbers in her hand, because she's going by the book as Min Jae requested. He gets ready to take her reports when he's suddenly called to the director's office, who has heard what an efficient worker he is. The director explains that their building redevelopment project is delayed because of OK Boon's complaints, so Min Jae gives them a solution, they should stop the project and allow the company that legally bought the building to sue them over their poor safety measures in the city, then they can lose it on purpose and the company will be given full rights to do whatever they want with the building. The director accepts this plan and congratulates Min Jae for his smarts, saying he could easily go from level 9 to a level 7 employee, but Min Jae is happy where he is. Later in the evening, OK Boon is arguing with business owner Hae Young over some sign, making a scene in the middle of the street that must be stopped by the other neighbors. All this is being watched by a young boy, Young Jae, who gets scolded by OK Boon for eating uncooked ramen. This boy turns out to be Min Jae's younger brother, and when he gets home, he doesn't want to eat what Min Jae made for him. He also doesn't want to show him his schoolwork, and when Min Jae points out they've moved here because of his education, Yoon Jae responds he knows it was actually because of his job. The next day, OK Boon shows up at the office with a box of photo evidence, because she's heard about the lawsuit and is happy to know the nasty company that is always kicking out tenants will get what they deserve. While Min Jae puts it all away with their unused files, OK Boon meets at a cafe with her best friend Yoon Sim, whose age is starting to give her memory problems. OK Boon is a little worried about that, but she also is very impressed by Yoon Sim's flawless English when she hears her speaking it on the phone. They chit-chat about various topics, Young Sim wants to meet more often and take OK Boon traveling with her, but that's turned down, and OK Boon mentions her tailor shop is slow nowadays. When it's time to leave, Jun Sum forgets her handkerchief, but when OK Boon tries to return it, she sees her friend is with a woman called GM Yo and decides to return it another day. Later, while doing some sewing on the handkerchief and watching TV in English, OK Boon is suddenly startled by convenience store owner and friend Jin Ju Daek, who has come to pick the jacket OK Boon fixed for her. After she's gone, OK Boon makes a call to the USA, but when a man picks up and speaks English to her, she gets too scared and hangs up. The following day, OK Boon goes to her English class, but she has trouble keeping up, she's surrounded by young people and the teacher goes too fast. After class, the principal tells her she should take some of the free classes for seniors at the local residence center, but she's tried them already and they couldn't help her, which is why she's now paying here. The principal gives her the money back and tells her they can't help her either. On her way out, she sees Min Jae speaking in flawless English to an American teacher, so when he's done, she asks him to teach her English, promising that she'll pay. Min Jae turns her down, saying he doesn't have time to do it because he's too busy with all the complaints she files. The next day, instead of presenting a complaint, she fills a sheet of paper with another request for him to be his teacher, which Min Jae turns down again. OK Boon then starts bothering him on the phone and shows up every day at the office to eat and read in front of him. She started to become a problem in the workspace, but when asked to give up, she says that then she'll hand in all the complaint forms she's been accumulating. Seeing his co-workers beg him not to let her do this, Min Jae accepts to give her a chance. To test her level, he gives her a list of words she must study, they're long, complicated words, but he tells her they're actually basic English. If he passes his test, then he'll accept to teach her. OK Boon studies hard but only manages to get a 75% when they agree on 80, 
So Min Jae tells her he won't be teaching her. When Ok Boon returns home, he sees a bald man bullying Hae Young, reminding her that she has one month to leave the building. Ok Boon jumps in to defend her and recognizes the bald man as the guy that comes every rainy night to ruin the building, but the man and his friends ignore her and just leave. Meanwhile, Min Jae is on the bus home when he sees his brother in that very same neighborhood, so he gets off the bus and follows him, only to find him having dinner with Ok Boon. She invites him to share their meal too, and Min Jae is surprised to taste how much better her food is than his own, he's also shocked to see all her English notes on the wall. Ok Boon explains that he would bump into Young Jae often and see him eat uncooked ramen, so she started to invite him over because eating alone is lonely. Touched by her gesture, Min Jae accepts to become her English teacher, and instead of paying him, she can keep on inviting his brother to enjoy her food. Their lessons start in the traditional way, with a textbook and asking each other how are you? But little by little, Min Jae gets her to get more involved through more creative methods, they play board games and have coffee at the office's cafeteria, he records some songs with basic phrases for her to repeat, and eventually, he even takes her to a bar foreigners usually hang out at. Ok Boon is nervous to talk to them at first, but when she sees they are nice and welcoming, she soon befriends them and ends up drinking and playing darts with them. Afterward, while walking home Min Jae tells her a bit about his life, while he was studying abroad, his mother passed away, and his father didn't tell him until later when he died too. Min Jae actually wanted to be an architect and design amazing buildings, but now he's merely a civil service officer that deals with building-related complaints. Ok Boon thinks his story is very sad, even if she didn't understand all of it because he said it in English. When the holiday weekend comes, the brothers spend it with Ok Boon. Young Jae wonders why she wants to learn English so badly, so she explains she has a brother that was adopted during the war and taken to the USA. He doesn't speak Korean, so she wants to learn English to communicate with him. Telling this story greatly upsets her, so she leaves them for a moment to cry alone, and while she's away, Min Jae memorizes the phone he sees written on the photo she shared of her family. That night, Ok Boon dreams of her childhood with her brother. The next day, Min Jae calls Ok Boon's brother, but as soon as he mentions her name, the man tells him he doesn't want to speak to her and requests not to be contacted anymore before hanging up. Later, when he visits Ok Boon to have dinner together, he is too upset to eat anything and decides to cancel their English lessons using the excuse that he needs to study to become a senior civil service officer. The following morning, Ok Boon goes to the hospital to visit Young Sim, whose condition has worsened. Ok Boon gives her the handkerchief back, which Young Sim still remembers, but her memory comes and goes and she doesn't know for how much longer she may recall things. Jin Myo comes in and requests to talk to Ok Boon, asking her if she'll help her friend and fulfill her last wish. Moments later, Ok Boon returns home to discover Hae Young is being arrested for having sold alcohol to minors, and she blames Ok Boon for it, thinking she made one of her usual reports. The next day, Min Jae and Young Jae have lunch together at the office's cafeteria, and Min Jae tells him that since he isn't teaching Ok Boon any longer, Young Jae should eat somewhere else. Meanwhile, Ok Boon comes to the office too and overhears Yang telling some co-workers about the lawsuit trick. Getting incredibly angry, she goes to A Young and asks her to give her all the evidence back, but it's been shredded since Min Jae called it unused files. Ok Boon begins making a scene so Min Jae is called to calm her down, only to be yelled at by her too. Ok Boon is very hurt by his lies, which will cost many people sources of income, and wonders if this is why he's been teaching her English, so he says yes, he only did it out of pity, which earns him a slap from her. Min Jae responds by telling her he's called her brother and he doesn't want anything to do with her, which causes her to almost pass out. All this is seen by Young Jae. Later, when Jin Ju Daek tries to visit Ok Boon, she sees her shop is closed, which isn't normal. Meanwhile, Young Jae begins smoking inside the apartment because he's lost all respect for his brother. He tells him off for what he did to Ok Boon, who only meddles in other people's lives because she's lonely since she never had a family of her own. At the market, the bald man shows up to try to kick Hae Young out of her shop, admitting he was the one that reported her the other day. But Min Jae arrives just in time to defend her and tells the men they can't do anything until the lawsuit is over, which earns him a scolding call from his boss. All this time, Ok Boon has been at the hospital keeping Young Sim company. Her friend doesn't talk anymore and doesn't recognize anyone either, she just stares ahead all day. Ok Boon is very upset by this, especially because Young Sim saved her life and she can't do the same in return, so Ji Myo gives her the letter Young Sim wrote for her before she lost her sense of self. At that moment, a reporter enters the room and tells her he belongs to the HR 121 Coalition, a support group seeking to increase public and political awareness of the tragic history of girls used as comfort women during war, with the ultimate goal being to get an official apology and reparations from the Japanese government. Young Sim has been working with them for years and wants her friend to carry on her torch, so Ok Boon announces she's done hiding. Some days later, she appears in the newspaper in the news because she wants to be one of the victims to talk in front of the American House of Representatives, who will be soon discussing the possibility of passing a resolution to solve this matter between Korea and Japan. 
Now that everyone knows of her past, Okabun goes to visit her mother's grave to let out all her frustrated feelings, crying as she remembers how she was hidden by her own family instead of being offered comfort. When she returns home, everybody acts awkward around her, including Jinju Dake, who ignores her. But Okabun is surprised to receive a visit from Minje, who apologizes for everything. After 60 years of not showing it to anyone, Okabun takes out a picture of her and Young Sim at 13 together with other girls in a military camp, where they were forced to be comfort girls. One night, after a soldier cut her stomach multiple times, Okabun tried to use a rope to end things, but Young Sim saved her and inspired her to keep living until they can escape. As thanks, Okabun embroidered that handkerchief for her. Years later, an adult Young Sim started to go around telling her story, but the translators would destroy what she actually said and changed it to lies like them having gone to the military base on their free will to ask for food in exchange for services. This is why Young Sim became fluent in English, and even wrote an entire letter in it to read in front of the Congress. When Young Sim started to have memory problems some months ago, Okabu knew she would have to take over her friend's duty soon, and that's why she started to study English. Minje accepts to help her again, and after he leaves, Okabun goes to confront Jinju Dake, who begins crying. She is hurt because she thought they were friends yet Okabun never trusted her with her story. Jinju Dake would have helped in any way, and would have stopped startling her, because now she understands why it would make her flinch. The two friends apologize to each other and make up with a hug. Minje begins helping Okabun with her English again, and lets her practice her speech in front of the whole office, for which Okabun thanks him by gifting him a suit she made herself for him to use during his interview. Hey Young also leaves her a note with some dollars in it, wishing her luck and apologizing for everything. Some days later, OK Boon arrives at Washington DC with GMO, but her hearing is about to get cancelled because unlike Young Sim, OK Boon never presented proof that she had been a comfort girl. This news appears on TV and Min Jae calls her to ask for details, feeling bad when he hears her say she's lost because of her own pride. Min Jae gets an idea then and begins a petition for her to be heard, which he makes everyone in the office sign. The employees and neighborhood friends also begin handing out flyers to let people know of the problem. Min Jae's director doesn't want anything to do with it at first, but Min Jae convinces him by pointing out this could be a great political move for his career. The director ends up signing the petition and so do various of his politician friends, including the mayor of Seoul and the minister of gender equality. The day of Min Jae's interview comes and he wears the suit, finding a good luck charm in his pocket that OK Boon left for him. When the interviewers ask him about his family, he says he has a little brother but also a granny. After the interview is over, he sees on the news that the petition wasn't approved because Japan demands hard evidence, so he rushes to OK Boon's house to retrieve her old picture. In Washington, D.C., protesters gather outside Congress to show their support for comfort women's rights. The first one to talk is Michelle Van Jansen, a woman forced to comfort at hotels by the Japanese in 1942 when she was 21. She tells all the gruesome details of her experience, including the fact she cut her hair to look uglier so the soldiers wouldn't choose her, but she only became an object of curiosity. They beat her, kept her luck, and treated her as less than a dog, but the congressman won't believe her, explaining the Japanese government said comfort women were volunteers that did it for money and were treated better than the soldiers themselves. Michelle calls them all ridiculous before passing her turn to OK Boon. The congressman protests though because she still hasn't handed in her proof and her testimony could be a lie, but the judge decides to let her talk and let that other issue be solved later. OK Boon is very nervous and freezes in front of everyone, but before they can take her out, she hears a voice asking how are you? It's Min Jae, who has come to bring the photograph and is now being stopped by security. Jimyo tells them he's part of their organization and takes the picture to give it to the judge as proof, so now that she has her friend's support, OK Boon finally talks. She raises her shirt and shows the scars Japanese soldiers carved on her belly while telling everyone about her terrible experience in Korean, which thankfully the interpreter translates accurately. She and her body are the evidence. Then she reads Young Sim's speech in English, which is put on Korean TV, so her neighbors are watching her and so is Young Sim, who manages a moment of mental clarity to be proud of her friend. The speech is met with a round of applause, and on their way out, all the congressmen apologize to OK Boon except for the Japanese, who want to pay her for her silence. OK Boon's response is giving them the finger. The group retires to the waiting room, where one more man is waiting for OK Boon, her brother, who saw her on the news and finally picked up Min Jae's constant calls. He apologizes for everything too and the two of them hug, happy to be together again. The Comfort Woman Resolution was passed unanimously on July 30, 2007, but even at this day, Japan still hasn't apologized. OK Boon gets along wonderfully with her neighbors now, who listen to her when she points out certain dangers on the street. Min Jae's interview is successful, so he isn't a junior anymore, now he's manager park. OK Boon continues to travel around the USA to keep up her fight, and when the guards at airports ask her if she can speak English, she says she can. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.